Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if we can hear temperature. Can you actually tell how hot or cold something is by the sound it makes? Well first let's test if we can tell the temperature of a solid just by the sound it makes. I have a tuning fork here. This fork vibrates at 440 hertz. The way this works is that when you strike it, the ends of the tuning fork wiggle back and forth at the lowest resonant frequency, which is 440 times per second in this case. These moving metal ends push against the air and make sound waves that are picked up by your ear. But notice that it isn't that loud. Since both sides of the tuning fork are wiggling out of phase with each other, they're slightly cancelling the sound waves. So if I take a paper and block the sound from one of the sides of the tuning fork, it actually makes it louder. but we can make it even louder by putting it against this wooden base. The tuning fork is also slightly moving in the longitudinal direction, so it'll push against the wooden base and cause it to wiggle at the same frequency. But since it's pushing so much more air, it sounds louder. So what about the pitch it's making? Well, let's see what happens when I freeze it in liquid nitrogen and see if we can tell if it's cold. So this one is now very cold, negative 196 degrees Celsius. Now let's see what it sounds like. This one. You can see that the frequency increases when I decrease the temperature. That's because the steel becomes a little less elastic and it doesn't bend as easy and so the natural frequency of the steel is now higher. So technically that means that when solids are cold then they should resonate at a slightly higher frequency. So whenever they're knocked around the sound would be slightly higher in pitch. But what about liquids? Well it's a well-known phenomenon that humans are really good at being able to tell the sound of pouring cold water versus hot water. So let's try it out and see if you can tell. But first I'd like to tell you about the sponsor for this video, Hero Wars. We all know I love talking about black holes and portals. Well if they reach 10,000 installs before October 31st for their game, then it will open this portal. Once the portal is open, then they'll give out 160 Amazon gift cards to random users who downloaded using my link. To enter, first download the game through one of the three tracking links placed in the description, or scan the QR code on the screen here, and then complete a short in-app tutorial. Then sign up for a free game account and get an in-game ID to take part in the sweepstakes. The list of winners from the sweepstakes will then be published on the website HeroWarsPortal.com. Not only do you get a chance to win some cool prizes, but the game is fun to play as well. I love the graphics and the strategy of the game. You can play in the arena where you fight other players, or you can play in one of their many other modes. So don't miss out on your chance to win some amazing prizes. Let's open a portal to the Dominion together. You can click on the special link in my description and download the Hero Wars before October 31st. And thanks again to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Okay, so here's my two cups. I'm gonna fill up one and then the other. The microphone's right in between it. Now let me know which one you think is hot and which one you think is cold. Okay, first one. Now second one. So what did you think? The first one was actually cold and the second one was hot. People usually get this right about 96% of the time. The reason is because there tends to be more bubbling in a hot liquid due to the lower viscosity. So the pore profile sounds different. So you can tell even in liquid what's hot or cold. But what about a gas? Well, all of this sound was traveling through gas before, the air. But can we tell how cold or warm the air is just by the air itself changing temperature? Well, we know that the speed of sound is not constant. The more dense a fluid is, the faster sound waves will travel through it. So that means that the speed of sound in air is faster at higher temperatures. So how would this affect sound waves? Well, remember that the speed of sound is equal to frequency times the wavelength of the pressure wave in the air. 
So that means that if we have a vibrating tuning fork at room temperature like this one, the frequency will be the same no matter what the temperature of the gas is around it. Because this frequency is only dependent on the natural frequency of the steel, so you'd have to change the temperature of the steel to change the frequency. So if we had this in very hot air, the frequency would be exactly the same. But since the speed of sound is faster, that would mean that the wavelength of the sound is longer. But our ears are frequency receivers. So even though the wavelength is longer in a warm room, we would still hear exactly the same frequency coming from the tuning fork. But this should sound a little odd to you. I'm telling you you would hear the same frequency coming from a tuning fork no matter what the density of the gas is. So in a room full of helium, the pitch would sound the same. Let's try it. Okay, so I have my tuning fork in here, and then I'm gonna close it and fill this volume up with helium. So let's see if it sounds any different in helium versus the air. So to do this, I'm just gonna be using my app, which is also a frequency analyzer, just like our ears. I'm gonna also be sticking my mic inside so you can see what you would have heard if your ear were in there. Okay, first let's test it with normal air. So that was really interesting. You can see that the fundamental frequency that it was at 444 hertz didn't change when it was in the helium atmosphere. But what did change was the resonance of everything. Notice that it didn't resonate for long. That's because the wavelength didn't fit inside of the box as well, and so it didn't resonate as long. This box is made to resonate well with air, not helium. So the less dense helium made it so that it didn't resonate inside of this box. If this is true, then why on earth does our voice sound higher when we breathe in helium? The reason is because when we talk, we aren't just speaking at one frequency at any given time. But there are actually many different frequencies coming out all at once depending on the size and shape of our vocal box that resonate at different frequencies. So some are louder and some are softer. And remember I said that when you have a less dense medium, since the speed of sound is faster at a given frequency, the wavelength is longer. Well, this means that in your vocal box, there are now going to be different resonant frequencies due to the longer wavelength. The areas that used to not resonate at higher frequencies now can resonate at this new wavelength. So your overall voice sounds higher because those new frequencies are coming through. You can see this when I blow helium through this tube here. In regular air, it sounds like this, but in helium, it sounds higher. That's just because of the amplification of different resonances at that new speed of sound and new wavelength. The timbre of your voice is different when you use helium, but the actual frequency of your vocal cords vibrating is the same. So it seems based on this that in a room with less dense gas, your voice could technically sound a little higher. But other sounds that don't include resonant frequencies in a voice box would be unchanged. But surprisingly, despite this, we can still tell when it's cold outside based on the sound. This is because on cold days, there forms a layer of cold air on the ground with hot air above it. And since the speed of sound is faster in hot air than cold, this means that the sound waves reflect off the hot air back to earth. So you can hear sound from further away on cold days than on hot. So actually in all of these scenarios, we can actually slightly tell the temperature of our surroundings just by the sounds that they make. This is amazing to think about. We're usually so focused on our sight that we forget how incredibly sensitive our ears are. In fact, we can detect vibrations that move the eardrum by a distance of only five picometers. That's one thousandth of a nanometer, or about 24 times smaller than a hydrogen atom. This sensitivity is amazing. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.